Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, August 26th, around 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. A long-duration M-flare is currently in progress as we're keeping a close eye on the tropics. In the next three days, we could have two major hurricanes in the eastern U.S., one in the Atlantic, a major hurricane just offshore of Hamilton, and another one developing in the Gulf headed towards Tallahassee. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It's boom time. National Weather Service confirms nine tornadoes touched down in Ohio during late night storms. The nine tornadoes touched down in northern Ohio during severe weather that took place Thursday night into Friday morning, and there were storms, well, EFO to EF2 touching down, which is good news with winds only up to 135 miles per hour, if we can even say that. Cuyahoga County was affected, as well as Geoga, Geoga County, EF1 tornadoes in Ottawa County, Erie County, Cuyahoga County, Lake County, Medina County, and EF0 tornadoes in Trumbull County. So quite a bit of activity going on in Ohio. And with nine tornadoes touching down, that means power outages. In fact, we do see 50,000 without power, which is a great improvement uh, over 200,000 without power earlier today. Quarter of a million without power over the United States overall with the big winner, Michigan, at 181,000 without power. Heat in several locations as the tropics heat up. The relentless and dangerous heat will continue across the south while returning to the southwest and northwest this weekend. Tropical Dis Depression 10 is expected to slowly move into the southern Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days and could strengthen into hurricane early next week. Portions of the west coast of Florida and the Florida Panhandle should monitor this system. We'll have the full forecast on Tropical Depression 10 Right now, the latest spaghetti models for the system are in, and they're updated four times a day. Here's the latest update. The consensus is showing, well, Tallahassee, Jacksonville area, that is where this system is potentially moving. And according to the National Hurricane System, if it is more of a northerly uh, track here towards Tallahassee or Jacksonville here, we're going to see it get enough time in the Gulf to develop into a hurricane. That would be about a Cat 1 when it makes landfall sometime on Wednesday, uh, bearing on which model you're using. So here we're just going to run these through for you there. And this is the GFS model. And with it is going to come lots of moisture. So just because it's a Cat 1 or a tropical storm doesn't mean much. What happens, the most catastrophic part of the storm is the flooding during and after the storm. And you can see here, central South Carolina, central North Carolina potentially could be picking up 12 inches locally. The panhandle up through all of central Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina could be greatly affected by flash flooding and dangerous flooding as rivers rise. Take a look at South Carolina. Most of the state could be seeing four to six inches of rain with potential areas up to 12 inches. So that is going to be the biggest problem with Tropical Depression 10 as most of this rain is going to fall Wednesday and Thursday in the east, southeastern U.S. So heads up. Let's take a look at the European model here, and it's showing uh, a landfall much later than the GFS. We're going to play this through for you. It does show a major hurricane headed towards... Bermuda there. And we can see Tropical Depression 10 here, probably making landfall someday, midday Wednesday, with not that strong winds. It's looking like maybe potential 65 mile per hour winds we just found in there, right there. That'd be a strong tropical storm. Uh, let's take a look at the GFS model. That's showing a much weaker hurricane, but with major, maybe more effects over here in Hamilton. And a more northerly landfall with lower winds, but a larger range of winds. So the models are still three days out, and we'll have much better control on what's going on with this storm. 
by tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night's update. So stay tuned for a more tightened spaghetti model, probably heading up here towards Tallahassee, in my opinion. So don't be scared. Be prepared. There is something coming to the panhandle. Well, let's say Tampa North. So be prepared. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Largest quake in the U.S. of 4.0 in Weston, Colorado, of all places. Could be fracking related. Overall, pretty quiet across the Western Front. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We've got Ubinus puffing to 22,000 feet today. Also, Santa Guito Fuego, Popoca, Tapeto, Reventador, Cleveland, Mayon, San Gay, Ubinus. Uh, Santa Guito to 15, Fuego to 15, Sabancaya to 24,000, Nivado de Ruiz to 20,000, Shishaldin puffing to 21,000 after a 29,000-foot explosion while the volcano was at Code Red uh, over the last 48 hours. That has since been reduced, and the paroxysm at Shishal then has ended. Space weather news update, a long-duration M1.1 solar flare just kicked off the sun. It's going to be a while before we know where this baby came from, but based on the latest HMI intensity, probably from active region 3413 or 3415, both of which could be geo-effective. So stay tuned in the, for the morning update if need be. And there is, in fact, no updates here at Solar Ham. The GOES X-ray flux, let's just refresh this and show that that long duration M flare lasted for hours, about an hour in the M range, three or four hours in the high C range. So this was a big event, could be a plasma filament release, but we'll know more in the morning. As Space Crew 7 launched just moments ago and is probably now docking with the space station as I talk, we can take a look at the Space Crew 7 launch live. One of the most diverse astronaut crews ever conceived, and they're sitting up there in that little death capsule up top. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine full power. And this off, go Falcon, go Dragon, go Crew 7. Endurance ascends an international crew Copy, destined for the International Space Station. Stage 1 That's propulsion 1. is nominal. Million. Good calls from the propulsion officers here. Propulsion's nominal. 1.7 million pounds of thrust on Falcon 9, taking Crew 7 to the International Space Station, now traveling almost 300 miles per hour. Nominal power and telemetry. We are just about T plus 45 down. seconds into the seventh rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. And right now the vehicle is throttling down to help us pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Now that maximum dynamic pressure is a time when the spacecraft can actually explode and they need to throttle down to prevent those G-forces from accumulating. Stage one, throttle up. And then they thr throttle back up. Confirmation, we have moved through max Q and are throttling back up. Copy, one Bravo. Heard that call from Jasmine on Crew 7, as well as confirmation from the ground. The call out for one Bravo means we are in the... And take a look at that acceleration. Once they get past max Q, the acceleration is, well, it's insane. They're now over 2,300, 2,400 kilometers per hour and rapidly accelerating stage will cut off ahead of the first and second stages separating then the not the single merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite we are now coming up on two minutes into the flight the spacecraft traveling over 2000 miles per hour really incredible night pretty awesome i highly recommend you to watch the entire video and let's see if they have in fact docked with the space station Here are the astronauts uh, about an hour after the launch. So, yeah, they have docked here. You can see them doing a burn. And 
And Dragon, we appreciate the introduction to the OR zero G indicator and noting that that is uh, probably officially now. So pretty cool that we can watch this all live, uh, much different than it was when, on the first moon landing to say the least. Now, a rare blue supermoon boom is going to rise this week on August 30th, two days after my birthday. It is the week for Virgos, and this type of experience with a blue supermoon won't return until 2037. A blue moon is a moon that is a moon a, is a full moon that happens either twice in a month or the 13th full moon of the year. And this one is a twice in the month full moon. A rare blue super moon boom. And this one is a blue super moon, which is actually going to be orange, which doesn't make any sense, but I do digress, is going to be a super moon because it is at perigee, which means it's closest to Earth. And so this is going to be a spectacular, very bright, very large full moon. So go out and look up. And please join us over at Magnetic Reversal News for a video we are already demonetized on, and it should be a good one, a discussion between Leah Shaper and I, two scientists discussing the climate change narrative and hysteria, arson-lit wildfires caused by climate change, penguin gate, polar bear truth, and CO2 lags temperature. And that is a boom to knowledge. Crestone Energy Fair is coming up. Please join us. Become a volunteer and help out the event and you can get fed and stay for free. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Hit the thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. The machine is demonetizing us and we need your help to continue to provide these videos that everyone seems to enjoy. Please, if you don't have any money and you can't donate, you can be part of the change by sharing this video. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.